Good evening, Manchester. You're listening to the Weekly Dion on 95.3 FM WMNH. I'm your host, Ben Dion. My dad's joining us tonight, as always. Dad, how's it going? Excellent. How are you, Ben? Not too bad. Not too bad. A little rainy. A little, a little gloomy out last few days. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's cool as well. It's cool, yeah. I'm very concerned about the white stuff. Don't say that. We're not going to get thrown away. <laughs> and uh, we have a very special guest in studio tonight, part of the WMNH family. He's part of now an elite group. I think he's the only one, um, part of the, the a group that's been on the show five, I think, five times. Yes. This, this is a very elite group. I think you're the yes. only one. Sorry, John Clayton, but I think you've been dethroned. Uh, but we have Matt Connerton on. Matt, how's it going? Uh, very well. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, I, I love uh, having you on the show. Uh, it's going to be all about politics tonight because we're we'll kind of previewing the upcoming uh, presidential election next Tuesday. And uh, so I wanted to have you on talk about it. I know you, that's all you talk about on your show, which I always learn something new from your show, which I like. Oh, well, thank you. Whether it's from one of your weird guests that call in <laughs> or just for you in general, just about something that's going on. or I, mean, I, I like to think of myself as someone that's, um, pretty informed of mm-hmm. like what's going on in the world, but I always like you say something like I didn't know that's ha- like that happened or that that person did that stupid thing, um, <laughs> but I always learn something new, so I like that. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, five times on the show. Wow. How does that feel? <laughs> I, I have to tell you, it's exhilarating. <laughs> and uh, and I'm also I don't know if it's true. I heard I get some continuing education credits for for uh, I mean, being here for the. I think you qualified. Yeah, 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 which yeah. is which is wonderful. <laughs> Um, but no, I'm glad to have you on the show. I love talking politics with you. You're one of the few people I feel comfortable talking to politi- talking about politics with because you just talk about it very just openly. Yeah, and it's not. I don't feel like if I say something, you're gonna yell at me or call me a bad word right, or anything. Right, right. And there's only a handful of people like I can actually talk about politics with without them calling me or just trying to stereotype me and put me in a, in a bubble. Mm-hmm. And I and I think that's why I love your show is because. You don't do that to people, and you just kind of talk about them th- very openly, and yeah. uh, people feel civil, comfortable in, in a civil way. Yeah, you thank know? you. In a civil way, what does that even mean anymore? You know, that's an excellent point, right? Because civility has kind of like gone the way of the dodo. It's sad. Yeah, it it's really, really it's sad. Disturbingly yeah. sad. When I can look up videos of just people going after other people mm-hmm. for something random that's going on, I, I just I can't stand it. But we could I could spend all the all, all night on that. Yeah. Um, but first things first, for people don't know who you are, which if they don't know who you are, they don't know who I am then. Um, oh. tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Matt Connerton and, uh, I host Matt Connerton Unleashed weekdays four to six right here on WMNH and, uh, pretty lively show today. Uh, as, as you, <laughs> yeah, crazy as Joe you went crazy. Heard, crazy Joe from New York city. Yeah. But, um, yeah, today we were talking a lot about radio. Um, actually we didn't really get, even get into politics, but. Just talking about radio in general. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's uh, – and, and I'm going to be – I should slip in a plug, too, because uh, tomorrow night I'm going to be on uh, uh, Retro Spectrum Radio with Paul E.C. Right, yeah. Another show here from WMNH making its – the show's been around for a while, but it will be for the first time on WMNH tomorrow night mm-hmm. for Halloween Eve at 8 p.m. So looking forward to that. I'll be Paulie's uh, co-host. But, um, yeah, but I've been doing my show for – I was thinking about it today. You know, it's it's actually been. I started it as a podcast back in 2011, so it's been oh, wow. nine years. Wow! wow. Jeez. Yeah. When did yeah. you transition to the radio? Uh, it'll be four years in April. Okay. Um, since I came uh, uh, to WMNH, so yeah. Shortly after uh, Peter started the morning show. Yeah, I think I think Peter was a year in. Okay. Maybe a year and a half in. Okay. Then you came on, and then yeah, and then I was the the next one. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, jeez, goes that's by crazy. Fast. It goes by really, fast. really. It, it really does. Yeah. What other uh, What other shows do you do? Um, I have a show that runs. Uh, I have a show called Local Outbreak that runs on a station up in Plymouth. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, that focuses on local music, New Hampshire based uh, music. Um, and you can find that online too. So that's 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 the other FM show that I do. Because you got a music background. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've played in uh, 127 different uh, bands, I think. Jeez. Wow. No, I'm wrong. No, I'm sorry. No, it was 128. I forgot one. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've been around. Yeah. <laughs> You're a very eclectic person, too. You're not one of those people, I feel like, you, like have, people have, like, their... Uh, we're into music, or we do music. We, play, you're, or you're, you know, you're into sports. You, you can kind of go around to different circles, which I, I like, and that's how I was in high school. Yeah, as you know, I played, I played basketball, I played sports, but I wasn't like a jock. I yeah. wasn't hanging out with the jocks. I hung out with everyone that did different things. Yeah, so I appreciate that. I like that a lot. Oh, thank you. Um, so I do want to get into uh, the um, talking about the presidential debates, but I do want to. Ask you a different question this time. Oh, okay. And try to stump you a little bit. Ah, <laughs> ah. Um, if you could describe Manchester when it comes to the political realm right now, if you could describe that in one word, what would that be and why? Not Manchester politics, but just oh. po- po- the political realm in this area, I guess. Because I know you're not a local political guy. You're more of right. of like national. Or national yeah. 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 But do you think people have handled this political atmosphere well in this area yes actually well in in this regard i don't know of any real i i know there was at one point uh there was a protest i think on south willow street there might have been something a few months back a little bit of like a a little bit of violence but but overall people have been really civil here yeah um you know we don't see you know when there is a protest for example we don't see rioting and looting out of control and things like that um, so by that standard, I think people here have been pretty good. Right. I agree. You know, I mean, then again, I mean, you know, you go on social media and you'll <laughs> see all these people from Manchester who are horrible to each other. Right. But that's, but that's online. That's a so different it's, world. It's yeah. Yeah. It's not the real, what actually really is. Yeah. I think yeah. primarily because they're allowed to be, they're allowed to do right. It. Right. There's no, the, nobody puts the brakes on those guys. But they're keyboard warriors. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's my, I love that term. Oh, yeah. Get them, get them in a scenario where it's one-on-one, things change. Oh, well, of course. Yeah. People talk to each other online in a way that they would never do right. never, in ever, person. Ever. Right. Or at least you would hope not. Yeah, really. Yeah. Or, or there would Some, be a lot of violence. It's, it's funny because I look at the people that post different things, and if I know them, I'm like, yeah, you're, you're that way in real life. Or others <laughs> that I'm like... Huh, I'm surprised you just said that because you right. wouldn't really talk about that in real life. It was, mm-hmm. it was interesting to kind of look at those perspectives because I, I really think you're right, too, because we've done everything pretty well, I think, around here. Yeah. And the normal people that are vocal and negative are still always going to be that way. It doesn't matter what's going on. Right. It just maybe it's turned up a little bit, but not mm-hmm. as much yeah. as it could have been, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I'd like to know how we could tweak. And, uh, you know, I'm not in it but i observe it and i hear about it how we can tweak social media how is it possible that we can get people to maybe love each other just get rid bit? of it then <laughs> i mean there's no yeah. I, don't, I don't feel a lot of love out there well i i, I think the problem is it's not the, the problem isn't really social media like we talk about social media like oh social media is so toxic but no it's it's it, social media is just you know how people behave on social media is their own choice it's right. not that social okay. media is toxic it's that People are toxic, mm-hmm. and social media is an avenue to channel that toxicity and just bathe in it. Right. Oh, uh, they're, they're bathing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're in deep. Well, it's funny. Yeah. I I used to always show this uh, little mini documentary on Facebook in my class talking about economics and businesses and stuff, and I always laugh when they talk about the beginnings of Facebook because I'm like, they really thought that that was all it was going to do. Like, <laughs> people can connect and see your favorite food, and right. like, and I remember when it Facebook came out, and I'm just like, "That's no, that that wasn't that wasn't going to go well. That wasn't right. going to just stay in this specific little bubble. Bubble. Like yeah. it's it was going to expand because yeah. that's what things do. Yeah. Like look at cell phones. We're not holding these huge things anymore. We right. can have a small one if we want a touch screen. Like that's what happens. Right. So I always think that's funny because. Social media, it was a bound to happen, mm-hmm. whether it was really, really positive, really, really negative, or it kind of depends on how you use it. But you're not on social media, so you don't have to worry about that. Over I there. don't have to worry, but I, I do remember when people used to take pictures of their food at restaurants. Oh, people still do. They, they, they still. Do I mean, that? I I do that sometimes. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm gu- I'm I can't say I haven't done that. <laughs> I am guilty of that. Yeah. So that is mild compared to what actually happened. <laughs> well, yeah. That is. If that's. <laughs> Can we get it back to that, please? If that'd that'd be great. Pictures of your bagel. Go ahead. <laughs> knock yourself out. If that's all you see, I mean, to me, if I see a post, I'm like, oh, I like that for sure. Yeah. Really. yeah. It's yeah. not negative. Show, show some pictures, you know, of non non essential crap. 
Yeah. Right. You know. yeah, right. I do that sometimes. Don't get heavy. Like but I also, when I take pictures of my food, I always give a shout out to the place I got it at. Absolutely. Ah, yes. Absolutely. I always yes. like to do that. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got I have to get. I have to have to give a big shout out to Mint Bistro. They're our buddy up. Tim Baines. They're back up, and they came back up very conveniently on Tuesday on, on, birth- on Ashley's on birthday. Ashley's birthday. So we got oh. some takeout for her birthday from Mint. It was great. Shout out to Tim Baines. Does a great job over there. They're back open. Go check them out. Um, so yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad we can go there. And it was your birthday on Monday. It was. <laughs> wow. It was. You're not October's about a great it. month for birthdays. Oh, of course, Ben. I don't like my birthday. No. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because this Please. is how I look at it. When you're a kid, birthdays are fun. You get presents. You get some cake. People <laughs> sing happy birthday for you. When you're an adult, it's like, oh, I, great. I, this is the month I get to register and inspect my car. <laughs> happy birthday to me. Pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't, I, I'm not big on marking time, though, either. To me, it's another click of the odometer. Like, I don't, I don't really get into New Year's yeah. either. Mm-hmm. You know, I just don't. Yeah. It's, it's another day. That's how I look and at it. It happens so rapidly. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Look who's oh, talking yeah. over there. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking really rapidly talking over really, there. Really, really fast. Yeah. And, and I only noticed recently, well, within the last decade or so, that the older I get, the faster it goes. That's. I think that's universal. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I, I, and I, I never recognized it up until about 10 years ago, and I definitely know it now. How many decades old are you? No, uh, way too many. Way too many. Are you a score yet? Four scores? Four score? Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. Four score is 80 years. You're wild. Relax over there. <laughs> uh, but we'll jump into our first thing so we can talk about the upcoming election on Tuesday. Uh, so we'll jump right into it. Just to remind you, listen to the Weekly Down on 95.3 FM WMNH. If you want to call in and join our conversation with Mr. Matt Connerson, call in at 603-250-6007. But we'll jump in right into our first segment, which is called Politics in the Mix. In politics in the mix, we're going to talk about the uh, presidential election, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about the state as well. Uh, but I did want to kind of keep it more national, which we normally don't do, we nor normally keep it don't. local. Yep. But um, we kind of saved it all up for you, Matt. I mean, we don't really talk about it, and I'd rather just <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I I wanted to get your perspective on things, and the first thing I think we have to kind of mention is, um, you know, the Democratic candidates that there was a huge field of of candidates to get it down to one person do you know the the number that it was the or original how, number? yeah how many democrats were actually like running i think there were almost as many democrats as uh, the number of bands i've played in <laughs> uh, perhaps yeah it was a lot, it was a lot. yeah 12, i mean it was well 15. into the double digits i i want to say it got to close to 20 at some point i think you're right Could've with been. with actually i mean there's Probably a lot more than that, but we don't know the right. people just because you can pay money and get yeah. on the ballot. Yeah. Um, but actual people that had held office before that are well known. Yeah. Or at least known a little bit. Um, and there was a lot of a lot of candidates. I feel like it was something. I think I said this before. It was like there was someone for everyone. Mm-hmm. Like someone could kind of like, hey, I like this person. I like to take different candidates and kind of mold them with other ones. But like, hey, can we just mix these two? And then I like this one. person, right? Yeah, because it's hard to pick someone that you really like. Yeah, um, especially in in this whole political world. But uh, we finally get down down to one um, with uh, Mr. Joe Biden going against uh, the incumbent uh, president. Um, but what are some highs and lows of this election cycle? It's been a weird cycle. Um, from I think right after our primary in New Hampshire, as when we start to kind of things that change a lot more rapidly actually probably after nevada is when things started to kind of shift because we got into march and that's when things started to shut down but what are, what are some highs and lows that you've seen so far from this election cycle? are there any highs <laughs> uh, i'll tell you what the low is for me is seeing the president come here and have these super spreader events uh, oh. infuriates me yeah it infuriates me yeah, and it should. uh it should you know, and and there's no reason for him to come here. He's not going to win New Hampshire. If he didn't win New Hampshire in 2016, he's not going to win it in 2020. Right. He's not going to pick up any states he lost before. No. His only hope is to hang on to, to all those states, and that's not going to happen, in my opinion. Um, so that's that's been a real low point. Um, I don't know about high points. I hate to sound so <laughs> cynical, but I'm stumped. I like, was actually trying to think of some. Yeah. And I really they couldn't. Have, I, don't, I can't. I can't think of any. Yeah. No real high. Yeah. I mean, I 
I generally like when elections happen, but this year I haven't really enjoyed it as much just because, one, I haven't been able to get involved like I wanted to because right. of everything. Right. Like, I like to go and canvas. I like to go t- to go to different events and meet people, mm-hmm. and you just haven't been able to do that this year. So it's it's yeah. been very weird. Yeah. Um, why do you think he did come to New Hampshire so many times? He's How many times has he been? I want to say it's been at least four. Yeah. And I, Pence has come a few times as well. I I think with Trump, it's for sentimental reasons. Okay. I, I think he feels an affinity for New Hampshire because this is where this is where his political career really began. I mean, um, I was talking on the show the other day about how Jenny and I went and we met him. This was before he announced his candidacy, mm-hmm. when he was just coming to New Hampshire and, and having these events at, at the homes of state reps, Republican state reps. Right. And, and um, you know... Uh, uh, Corey Lewandowski, his first campaign manager, is a New Hampshire guy. You right. know, he's he's got a lot of connections here politically. So I think he feels probably some affinity for the state. Okay, I think that's the only reason. Uh, or uh, maybe he says, you know, they're only if you take the territories out of it and just go by the states, they're only fifth in the country for COVID cases. We got to get that number up. <laughs> so there let's uh, go. let's there pack go. a bunch of people into an airplane <sighs> hangar with no masks. Um, yeah, to view those events without any, with yeah. everyone in tight and no mask, oh. it's, it's extremely disturbing. Well, I, I don't, really I just is. don't get how they don't see what the problem is with that, or it's the message that he brings. Requiring right. it though, like I don't see how even the states, like I don't see how as a state we're not able to make them, and if they're not going to, like I don't see how we can enforce that. I guess it must be tough just because he is the president. There is yeah. enforced, there is law enforcement there, but like they can't really like. Yeah, they'd be seen as targeting them probably or something like that. Well, but, we have a right. governor that's a Trump guy. Yeah, but we also have guidelines and restrictions here too. So that's why I don't understand so like, yeah. with that one, amount of people. I, excuse the expression, but one trumps the other. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, the thing really. is, so Governor Sununu, he's in a tough spot. On the one hand, my, my personal opinion, I think he's been exemplary on on dealing with COVID. I agree, and he has resisted. I mean, a lot of people in his own parties are angry at him. Yeah. Because of uh, because of of how he's handled this, because a lot of people in his own party think it's either a hoax or a, a conspiracy orchestrated by George Soros, so that Bill Gates can microchip all of us. Exactly. <laughs> so so, but on the other hand, if he goes, if he starts openly going against Trump, his own political career is over because right. the Republican Party is Trump's party. Yeah. So if you go against Daddy, you know you he, lose. Right. Right. Exactly. We actually have a caller. See who this is. Thanks for calling the Weekly Down. Who's this? Hey, boys, it's your biggest fan, Polly C. Hey, Polly. Paul, how's it going? Good hey, to Paul. hear you, man. It's going all right. How's it going with you, boys? Excellent. Not too bad. We have our, you know, we the, this guy's been on the show so many times, I think he could just be on the show permanently. My dad, that's his biggest competition right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, you, are you talking about your guest there? What's his name? I think it's Matt. I think his name's Matt. Oh, Maybe? yes. Okay, rings a bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I don't mean to intervene, boys, but I did turn on your radio as I do every Thursday at about this time, and I did hear the charming and talented Matt Connerton sitting in there with you. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I, I hate to digress, but I wanted to do a shameless plug for my show coming up tomorrow night at 8 p.m. with Matt Connerton, who's my co-host. Go to it. It'll be Retro Spectrum Radio, and we'll be doing um, a show every Friday night at 8 p.m., right in that same seat your son is sitting in there, Daryl. All righty. And uh, I, love it. I will have a very good friend, actually a mutual friend of uh, uh, Matt and myself, uh, uh, Dan Randlett. And we're going to be sitting there, the three of us, listening and talking about old retro television shows and commercials and uh, movies and, of course, music. And that debuts tomorrow night. A very special debut Halloween episode oh, yeah. of Retro Spectrum Radio tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Can't wait to That's listen. That's awesome. Make sure you guys tune into that. Uh, looking forward to it, Paul. I mean, I, I love the concept for the show because it's something different. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's it fits awesome. well, I think, on the on the WMH station. And welcome to the WMH family, I guess. And I, I yeah. love that. You should yeah. have a show. That You're the number one person I feel like should have that type of show because you're, you'd be a great host for it. There you go. Well, thank you very much. And, of course, we'll also be uh, touching base on a normal basis uh, as far as uh, with John Clayton and the history and nostalgia of Manchester as well. That will also be um, one of our topics. And, actually, John Clayton will be our very first guest on an upcoming episode. Ooh, awesome. Very nice. That's great. Very good. 
All right, boys. Well, I hope you all tune in. And, Matt, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I can't wait. This is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> we'll be tuning in. All right, in. guys. Thanks, right, Paul. Right, Thanks Paul. for calling in, Paul. Have a good night. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Make sure that you guys listen to Retro Spectrum tomorrow night. That's live at 8 p.m. right here on 95.3 FM WMNH. I'm excited for that show. It's going to be great. I saw oh, it yeah. again. I was like, yes. Well, we used to do, I don't know if you guys know this, but we used to do a, a different iteration of the show strictly online oh, as a wow. podcast, essentially, uh, like 10 years, I don't know if it was 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, and you can find those. They're up on YouTube uh, on uh, the Retro Spectrum Radio page, the home of the Retro Spectrum Radio, as, uh, as Paul would say. Um <laughs> But this will be the first time that the show's been on FM radio here on WMH. That's so awesome. It's a, it's a whole new, it's a whole new world. It's going to be really cool. I feel yeah. like that's how we all get started too, is through podcasts or yeah. okay. our own independent, and then they, they they catch us on up to get in here. Yeah, yeah. Is it basically the same concept that uh, yeah. that it was? Yeah, excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah, except it'll be listen. better. I can't wait. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I don't know if more people can handle John Clayton. I mean, John's gonna <laughs> be on every show. <laughs> he, he brings so much information. Though. He great. really does. He does. Yeah. Wealth of it. Uh, looking forward to that. Again, that's Retro Spectrum. That's uh, tomorrow night live at 8 p.m. right here on 95.3 FM WMNH. Um, so we're talking about the highs and lows of the election. Um, it's it's really, yeah, I, I haven't been able to find a highlight, I guess. Yeah. Um, just because it's it's been very polarized. It's very, it's, it's concerning. Mm-hmm. And it I keep thinking of, so what happens after the election? And... Where do we go from there? So I look at both scenarios. If Biden wins, mm-hmm. what happens? Like, what what do you think is a potential result of how him the, winning the how election? How does the country change? Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you in the short term, for the first time in my life, I'm genuinely concerned about violence. I think um, you have to be. Yeah. You have to be. Do you think really- overall or, um, like, I, don't, I think New Hampshire, I think, will will be able to, I guess, maintain civility. And I, yeah. I I think, I hope at least. I hope so. But some other states I'm worried about. We were talking about this off the air before. Yeah. yeah. States like Michigan, mm-hmm. uh, Pennsylvania, they've had some serious, you know, threats and people right. that have been like, you know, make sure this goes well. If it doesn't go well, we're going to be right. trying to cause uh, uh, disturbances. Well, I had somebody, you know, basically tell me today on Facebook, you know, well, you know, your side's going to, uh, your your side's gonna or or we're gonna win. He says something like, "Our side's gonna win," and if, either we're gonna win by vote or we're gonna win by force. And oh, you know, man. it's like, okay, so what? You're gonna start shooting us if if it looks like, exactly. you know, that's I've never because the thing is, you know, you've got these militia types who you know love to talk about, uh, you know, they they love to talk. They all think they're Rambo and. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they couldn't be bothered to serve their country by joining the military, but they think they're going to serve their country somehow by uh, shooting Creating liberals violence. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they always, like, they're so, like, they always come off as kind of a joke, you know? Like, right. like I've known so many of these people, and it's always impossible to take them seriously. But for the first time in my life, I'm taking them seriously. And part of it yeah. is because of what happened in Michigan. Exactly. When the, those idiots tried to uh, kidnap the governor... And I think that sheriff knew, by the way. Really? I think he knew. Wow. Um, I won't say his name because I, I don't you know, want somebody to hear this and sue me. But let's just say there's a certain sheriff in Michigan who I think was in on it hmm. uh, just based on the interviews with him that I watched. It's like, yeah, that guy, he's not. I think I saw it. Yeah, I think you, I saw You know else. who I'm talking yeah, yeah. about. Yeah. 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 Um, and I'm, I'm worried about, you know, and then when Trump at one of the debates, you know, says to the Proud Boys, you know, what did he say? Stand uh-huh. back and stand by. Yeah, yeah. I got to tell you, when I hear stand back and stand by, you know what I think he's, uh, to me, what I hear is, yeah, get stand ready. by and get ready to, uh, you know, to, to kill some people if you need to. Right. I mean, this, I mean, we're in uncharted water here. Certainly are. And so uh, how, how, how will we handle this as a nation? I mean, is there, there is a faction. There are people that feel that way, yeah. And, and I feel very strongly that they will react disturbingly if yeah. Trump loses. Yeah. So how do we act as a nation to quell that, to to make sure that that doesn't get out of hand, or can we? No, I don't think we can. Really? I I think I uh, I think we're just going to have to deal with it, and hopefully it doesn't last very long. Okay. Yeah. I mean, 
I think it's going to be a state by state thing as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I definitely think. Yeah, I think more states. I mean, I think the majority of states will handle the correct way. Yeah. When I'm not saying like law enforcement, I'm saying like regular p- people. Like, I think that's what I'm worried about. It's just mm-hmm. crazy people that are right. You think it'll be important or think, necessary to call the National Guard? Yeah, probably. I, I think, think in a state like Michigan, it's a reality. I think yeah. it is. I yeah. really think it it's is. It's scary to think about, but I think in in, in, in those it, specific states, I think I think well, I think so. The battleground mm-hmm. states that have been very vocal when when if, when all with all of this. I mean, Michigan was very vocal about not wearing masks and and the lockdowns, and you know, all, they're very well, very vocal about that. And Trump, just Trump's inside of them. I mean, he said, you know, oh yeah, we yeah. know what he said. Like when he tweeted, "Liberate Michigan." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. he he knows what he's doing. And he's, the key states, he was saying that too as well. And mm-hmm. it's a whole. And I, I do have to give Biden a little credit when it came to the, some of the debates and, and just the kind of combating the rhetoric mm-hmm. of Trump and what he was saying and. I, I feel like it should hit home for more people when he says, you know, I'm not just a Democrat. You know, when the person wins, they become the president. It's not right. You're not the president just for this group of people. Right. He's it's the for president the for everyone. It doesn't matter what you of think the, or what you're saying. Country. Right. Right. And Trump clearly is not. Right. Right. But clearly. And I mean, has no interest. If you, in if you don't if you don't get it now, you never will. Right. I yeah. mean, he's catering to a certain group mm-hmm. and what, 30, maybe 35 percent of the uh, of those folks. Mm-hmm. And they're in deep. Yeah. And I'm not sure how, but they're in deep. Yeah. We have a caller. See who this is. Thanks for calling the Weekly Down. Who's this? Good evening, Benjamin. It's me. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? Hi, Karen. <laughs> I know that voice. Hi, <laughs> Hi Matt. Hi, Daryl. Hi, Karen. I have a Hi, question Karen. since you guys are talking about possible violence, which I'm really worried about. Um, I don't know if you had watched, and I don't even know why I caught it on Fox News, but Trump was on there as usual, and he even made the um, journalist, journalist a little nervous when he said that if Biden wins, he's not even going to last two months as president. And the journalist is like, well, what do you mean? And he goes, I'm just saying he won't even make two months. Do you think that puts Biden, if he wins, at risk of really people making him a target for assassination? I don't know if that's mm. what Trump means. I'm sure Trump would like, you know, these militia types to get that message. But I, yeah. I have a, I have a suspicion, though, that when Trump says something like that, he really means that Biden just isn't up for it. Right. And that, uh, you know, Kamala Harris is going to end up as president really quickly. And, and do you think it was said in, in such a way that he wouldn't he'd be elected in November 3rd and wouldn't make the inauguration? Is that the because it's a couple months between now and then? Yeah, that he wouldn't make it there. I also think he says it just because it's open ended. He doesn't. He's yeah. not going to say specifically what he means. Exactly. He says it exactly. for people to think. Draw their own conclusion. Right. I Draw think. Own conclusion. Right. Yeah. As much as I hate to give him credit on like provoking different thought, provoking. Right. You know, I know that's what he does. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. That's what people think. They they don't. Yeah. They have to draw their own conclusion from he it. He is a provocateur. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Most definitely. Do you think that Vice President Biden, when he becomes president, because I think he's going to be, do you think he's more at risk of somebody trying to get at him? Boy, I hope not. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to think that, personally. I, I don't even want to go there. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I guess based on the insanity that that is now our new political life, it's possible, I guess. Agreed. I mean, look, yeah. if there's a militia group that's going to try to kidnap and torture uh, Gretchen Whitmer because apparently that was their intention. Yeah, Absolutely. This, right. Yeah. So it, it could exist. I, I think I, I can imagine somebody taking yeah. a shot at Biden. Yeah. 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 And I think as much as I don't want to think it. Yeah. Yeah. I think every president has the, you know, regardless of who it is, I think there is an amount of threats on their life probably from right. the Secret Service, but they're never going to say right. how many or who's, who's right. doing those unless it's like they've actually arrested someone for it. True. But yeah. I, I definitely think that that I mean. That's a scary thing to think about too. Like, yeah, it is. It regardless is. of if you agree with their political views or the direction that they're putting our country, that's still that's not how it works. That's yeah. not how it works. Yep. Well, actually, like I said, I'm afraid of the violence. But when I heard Trump say that, that's the first thing that came to my mind. And this whole thing, I'm even getting more and more um, nervous for Vice President Biden when he becomes president. I, I just. I just have, I hate to say this, I have this terrible feeling that whoever heard him on Fox News and most of his supporters listen to Fox News, 
you know, the, it was like that little, okay, he said, let's go get him. And I'm, I'm mm-hmm. really afraid something can happen to him because of that. Mm-hmm. I think if this is the weird thing that I think of, um, you know, I think if Trump does lose, I don't think we're going to hear anything from him after. I think a lot of people think that he'll be more vocal or he'll, you know, try to inside. I, I honestly think that if he loses, especially if I think if he loses big, mm-hmm. I don't he'll think we're going to, I think he's just going to kind of, I don't think he'll go away. You mean after he leaves office or in the after he leaves office? Time? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I just don't, I don't think we'll hear anything from him. I think it's the interim from the from the point well, of the yeah. election from, to, the, to, to, to the inauguration. inauguration. Exactly. I think that's the, that's, what that's me the nerve wracking part. Yeah. But I think after that point, I I don't think I don't I think he'll just kind of just stop. No, I think so too. He he might he might want to find a country that uh, doesn't have extradition exactly. that he can go. And I'm not even like it sounds funny, but I'm actually not kidding. Yeah, I'm actually not kidding. But in the interim, though, yeah. Uh, he's gonna burn the. He's gonna try to burn the place down on his way out the door. You right. know he is. He's gonna be Absolutely. angry. He's gonna be bitter. He's gonna be frustrated. Yeah. Um. That I'm worried about. And then and then won't it be interesting? I would bet money on this, and I'm not a betting man. He will not be at the inauguration. No, I he would will agree. not be no. there. I agree totally. I would yeah. be very totally. surprised if he was. Yep. Yep. He's he's not gonna be a happy camper. Nope. <laughs> he's not a happy camper. Period. Daryl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And Thanks, you Karen. all have a good evening. Nice talking to all three of you. Thanks, Darren. Thanks for thank, calling in. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Bye-bye. 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 Yeah, it's interesting to think about. I always, you know, it's try, try to predict of what's going to happen, mm-hmm. whether whoever wins, I think is interesting because I think I. it's funny. I think about I wish I could see both scenarios to see yeah. how both sides would react to it because yeah. I think it's going to be very different. Depending on what happens, yeah, uh, and accepting the results and making you know sure that people understand this is how it works. We know how to vote, we know how to count them, and we know how to come up with a winner, and that's what we do here. Yeah, and I it, it's a little. Um, I don't know if you, Matt, I don't know if you watch the you watch the circus on uh, Showtime. No, I'm I, well. I've seen it. I'm familiar with the right. show, but I haven't kept up on it. It's so pretty good. They, one of the recent episodes they had. Um, I forget which attorney general from what state it was, or a secretary of state from which which state, uh, but they were talking about voting and counting the ballots and, and basically the whole process of voting. And his confidence made me feel better. I want to say mm. it was in a key state, in like a, a state that's, you know, a, a very, you know, a background, battleground state. And he made me feel more confident about it because he said, we know how to do this. Yeah. We know how to count ballots. We know how to get people registered to vote. We know how to, we know what we're doing. Unless there's something outside force that's specifically trying to impede upon that, we can do this and do it correctly and give you the right results, regardless of who wins. It doesn't matter who wins. We know know how to do this. And honestly, I think that's the case in all the states, and it's just Trump spending that other other thing. Yeah. Well, there's states out west, like Utah, for example— where you know it's rural and spread yeah. out, they do they're voting almost entirely by mail in. Yeah. Exactly. And I always use Utah as an example too, because Republicans, you know, are like, well, if there's mail in voting, the Democrats are going to figure out how to commit massive fraud, and you know, and it's like, well, you know, in Utah, they do it almost all by mail, and you know who wins in Utah for the most part? The Republicans. Republicans. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. And Utah, I don't know if you saw that ad that the two candidates for governor made together. They made an ad together. Um, so the Republican oh. candidate is the current lieutenant governor, and um, it's a so the the current governor is not running for re-election. And the Democrat, they did an ad together, just talking about you know voting and accepting the results and just being civil. I didn't know that. Yeah, I posted. I think on my personal page. I'd like oh, to wow. see that. Um, it's yeah. really cool. So they've. I think they made two or three of them. They're very similar. Yeah. Um, one of them is a little bit more funnier because they're like, whether you vote for me. Or vote for me, like it's right. it's just really cool to to see that. Yeah, um, that actually, is cool. people behaving in a civil manner. Well, yeah, I love and it. I like the I way they were. Like this is we know how to do this, and we want to be the example. We don't care who you vote for. Exactly, you don't have to be mean about it. Right, just yeah. vote because that's who you think will put the country or the state in the right direction, and that's what it is. Yeah. And I think people kind of forget that. Yeah, they yeah. get so passionate about. Uh-huh. Whether it's a specific issue or just that person in general and whatever that concept they think is, yeah. that they just kind of blow it out of proportion. And I think 
I, I don't know. It's yeah. that simple. I, it's know, hard to explain, but it really is that simple. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, I agree. Know, I have a specific theory, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this theory. Is this a conspiracy theory? No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> in January, when you know things started brewing, and we had a playbook on how to deal with COVID. Mm-hmm. It was passed down from the Obama administration. The CDC was on board. Everybody knew what to do. Right. It was like protocols. My, exactly. Yeah. My theory is, is if our president would have dealt with that properly and done the right thing right from the start, it would have been a cakewalk to the White House, to the re, to re-election. Oh, That's my I, theory. I agree because... Yeah. Cakewalk. It didn't have to... Yeah, it, it didn't, didn't have, have to be, be this way. way right? No, 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 not at all. Right. I feel like it was an and easy thing. so much pushback with the mask thing now. Mm-hmm. I mean... Uh, I mean, because he fumbled, yeah, he had no way to bail. Yep, and I think it was a. I I hate to be really bold, but it was a stupid thing yeah. to get wrong. Like mm-hmm. it makes pretty common sense. And, and he was staring at it. Well, if you want yep. to compare countries too, compare numbers and how countries have gone at it, we've done similar things to France and Germany, and they're seeing spikes too. We're seeing mm-hmm. more spikes than we are. Yep. I exactly. think. Yeah. Um, but if you look at and I, granted, they're smaller countries in population and, and smaller landmass or whatever, but I think it was South Korea and I think China, too. Yep. They, China's got it under control. But they did, they all wore masks. Mm-hmm. They was all required, and they kept everything open. Yep. Because they were able to realize we're still going to have people that get sick. There's still people that are going to, you know, maybe pass away from this, but we can stop that spike quickly. Yep. If everyone just does this, we stay open because we need to have our economy going. Right. And that worked. Japan, worked, too. Worked. Yeah, Japan. Japan, Japan as yeah. well. I yep. think it was Japan, South Korea, and I think China, for the most part, are regions of China. I yeah. don't know if it yeah. was every part of China. Yeah. China's huge. They're yeah. basically on the, uh, back, back to normalcy there. Right. right. And that's the thing. Like, they, and they where might are we? Be... We're the laughing stock because mm-hmm. we've got, uh, you know, 5% of the population and 20% of the cases. Yep. It's sick. Yeah. And it's funny. And that's not us. That is not America. That is not who we are. And it's, well, it, it's very disturbing to me how this actually could act, could actually happen in this country that I love. Yeah. It's weird it's, to think that, no. that uh, I guess, something that like, like a virus, something that's, you know, a disease, something that's infectious could really affect an election mm-hmm. that much, that that's the key issue. When you think of key issues in an election, you don't think of something medical. Yeah. You might think of health care. Right, but you you think of immigration, education. You think of those key typical things, but not a pandemic. This has been such. This has been the topic because of the way it's been handled. Yeah, or and mishandled. you know, overall, I think New Hampshire we we've handled it pretty well. Oh yeah, um, I think so. And we're, I, we're, so. I mean, we're still seeing spikes here now, not as much as other states are. Yeah, um, but to a, to a degree, I think we handled it pretty well. well. Like I said last I looked, we were we were only fifth in the country. Yeah, it, you know. With the 50 states, that's if you take out the territories and right. everything, yeah. I think Maine and Vermont had the lowest. Yeah. I think um, the Northeast in general has, has handled it pretty well. We're pretty good yeah. up here. Yeah. yeah. New England's actually pretty top in uh, most categories. Well, Ma- Massachusetts has had a rough time. Yeah. They yeah they're they the only one that's kind of in Connecticut, too, I think. Yeah. I saw a story about Connecticut uh, a lot of, a lot tonight of about it. Well, I have, a, I have a theory that the what, what has helped save us is our lack of mass transit. No subway systems here. Yeah. No commuter rail, even though, ironically, I've always advocated for commuter rail. Me but too, right now, too. I'm actually glad we don't have it. I <laughs> really? really do think that that's the reason because, you know, obviously in any major metropolitan area where you've got a lot of people packed in, right. you know, it's it's going to spread like like on a subway. I mean, right. that, that must be a, just a Petri dish for, e- exactly. for spreading something like this. We don't have any of that here. And I think that is what saved us. It certainly isn't because everyone's masking up. No. Uh, because no. it's like pulling teeth to get people to mask up here. Yeah. Yeah. A little difficult. Yeah. And, and when the message doesn't emanate from the top, can you imagine if our president would have advocated masks right from the start? Can every, you just imagine? Every Republican in the country now would be wearing a mask and it would not be an issue. Absolutely. Because they all do what he's... They, they whatever, all, what, whatever daddy says, exactly. that's what they yeah, do. Yeah. So if daddy had said from the beginning, or at least very early on, yeah, let's all wear masks. And then the whole thing, just like with Japan and South Korea, and what the whole thing about shutdowns wouldn't even be an issue. Right, exactly. If everybody would mask and try to social distance, then, then this whole thing would have been an issue. And Trump would have been. You're right, Daryl. He would have been sailing to re-election. No doubt about it. Yeah. You, it, it, it. None of this, but... 
always all of his problems are always self inflicted anyway. <laughs> exactly. He's in a constant state of self immolation yeah. like nothing I've ever seen. But then again, when you have a cult of people who don't mind if you self immolate constantly, they just they'll follow you anyway. They'll follow him right over a cliff. And they have. And they have. Yes. Sadly. Very sadly. That's it's so disturbing to me. Yeah, so and disturbing. I still think there were people that wouldn't wear masks anyway, just because there's going to be a population that oh, just sure. doesn't. Oh, sure. But I definitely yeah. think you're right that it would be much much smaller. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, um, and I always, again, I go in a rabbit hole watching these weird videos of people <laughs> freaking out. Yeah. And They're freaking out. <laughs> the reasons is I'm like, you don't make sense with your reasons. Mm-hmm. And I understand it. It's annoying. I get it. Yeah. Everyone is not no. There's no one in the world that's gonna be like I enjoy this. Right. No one's gonna say no that. No one of likes course. it. But it's you got to do what you got to do. But yeah. it's it's selfish not to. Right. Exactly. And you know I always say like well if you have to just don't go there if you're that uh, don't no because we want to be able to live our lives. Right. So if everyone just did it we'd be able to. Right. No one, this wouldn't be a big deal. We right. We would be able to live our lives if we just did it. And we could get through this right. exactly. so much quicker. Exactly. Yeah. Because the other thing that infuriates me about these people is they'll say, well, we can't live like this forever. It's like, yeah, no kidding. Right. That's the point. Exactly. We don't want to live like this forever, so let's get it over with. Grow right. up, put the mask on. Yeah. Gee yeah. whiz. I'm so, I, I've, I've just oh. lost so much <laughs> patience with anti-maskers. Oh, man. And I, they, I've they, lost patience with our country. Well, it's common yeah. sense, too. It's That's the that's what bothers me. I, I'm a very common sense person. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Let's, this is going to help, and this is going to mm. move us forward. Let's do that. Yeah. And <laughs> I posted, I think it was an NAP, um, NPR article about the 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 countries that, that wore masks and the percentage and how much it would go down and mm-hmm. everyone did. Yeah. Just for a period of time, not even like... Like I think it was like four weeks is what they 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 um said the average yeah the average time and what the projected numbers would look like. Mm-hmm. I'm like this makes sense. Right? Why doesn't everyone see that this makes sense? Like mm-hmm. it's like me saying, oh look, that grass is green, and you say it's purple. No, it's pretty. I mean, if you're colorblind, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but it it just it bothers me. It's 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 just common sense. I think. You know, I I saw the, the 60 minute special with uh, Dr. Fauci on. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, that was a heartbreaking uh, segment. Yeah. The fact that he has to have security because his oh, life is being threatened yep. because he speaks right. the truth, because he's, he's speaking science. The science is going to save us. I mean, are you kidding me? Well, he's doing his job, too. Exactly. Like, he's, he's, done he's done this for years. He's done this right. He's done this for years. Yeah, decades. That's his job. Decades yeah. and he's decades. Part yeah. of this, that's his department. Yeah. Yep. He's the man. Like, it's not like he all of a sudden, hey, we're going to appoint this guy and he's going to be that person. No, that's his job. Like, that's literally what he went to school for. This is what he studies. Like, yeah. This is what he does. Is. Oh, man. I don't I don't get it. Oh. Um, You know, as we go forward, we're, we're, this little fun, every time we have someone on that we actually like, which is most people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we like the everybody. The Come show on. flies by, too. Yeah. Um, well, the topic is topical. Yes. Um, I mean, really. <laughs> the next thing I did want to get to for sure um, is the debates because that's mm-hmm. the funny thing to me. <laughs> the first one was not funny because it's just frustrating. Um, and the, the the town halls that were replaced of the second debate was always interesting too. Yeah. Matt, did you watch any of the SNL? Um, oh, of course. <laughs> I wanted to watch those more than the debates. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I kind of no, didn't yeah. want to watch the debates and just watch those. Yeah. And then watch the debates after and go, oh, oh. that's what they were talking about. Right, right. Caller. <laughs> Let's see who this is. Thanks for calling Luke Down. Who's this? Oh, it's uh, Easy G. Oh, oh. Eric. Oh, How's you, it going, bud? Easy G. I want to give my two cents. The uh, I'm watching one of the debates, and uh, I don't know if it was an interview or a debate with uh, Joe Biden, and, he, and they said, you know, if you were to lose the election, you know, how would you react? And I think I remember him saying, I, I would just, you know, I would, I would be upset, but I, I would, um, you know, and he, yeah, he said, he said he would, he, he would, um, yeah, Spit it he out. would gracefully say, you know, I lost the election and that he would just move on. This is too bad. The other side doesn't believe the same thing. Huh, agreed. agreed. Yeah, definitely. Agreed. Totally. Very good. It'd be, it'd be a nice world to live in. Yep. Like you were saying on the show earlier that I have to, Agree to that. I'm afraid of the uh, some kind of violence. Yes, if Trump doesn't win. Yeah, yeah. We're also fearful of that. Definitely. And then one of the callers on your show, Matt, was uh, going off like 45 minutes when I was on the show one time. And <laughs> yeah, thanks. He was insisting thanks, that if Trump loses, he was going to invoke some kind of amendment or something, and 
keep in power. And okay, I don't remember that phone call. How can we forget? <laughs> I remember that too. Yeah, that, <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping the uh, you know yeah the uh, le- minds will. Uh, I mean, Trump will figure out you know if he did lose that he will graciously you know accept it. And, oh, he won't and be move gracious. On, you know? that's not, that's not, I, I think that's I not think it, that would be better for his product because if he makes a big uh, you know what of himself. Because uh, a friend of mine like to think that if he does lose, he's, he's still going to be on TV and and do a lot of things. And if he makes a big, you know, one of himself, I, I think his product will be damaged for good. Yeah, he's got quite a product there. He's going to bring back yeah. the uh, Trump sticks. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great radio show and have a great evening. Bye-bye. Thanks, thanks, thanks Eric. Eric. Thanks, thanks for calling in. Was easy G? Yes, yes. Uh, that was easy uh, G. My God. <laughs> Will you calm down over there, <laughs> Jesus Crow? I'm going to have well, you and him like, on the show. He comes on. He calls Ben Show. And talks about the conversation he had on Matt's show. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Were you relaxed? You're so sensitive over there. I am very sensitive. See, talking, I, I it's like a it. very sensitive topic. I like it because it's good good promo for my show. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I like the cross. Listen promotion. to Matt's show, but don't forget us. That's right. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Let's get back to those debates. Debates. When I saw Jim Carrey playing Joe Biden, are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. I like the wow. mannerisms, <laughs> and I like how you're, if you watch both, and you're kind of like thinking that's probably what they're thinking in their head mm-hmm. of yeah. what's going on. Like they didn't actually do that. It's very overemphasized and oh, enthusiastic. Oh, but yeah. I just like the, I think my favorite part is the moderators. Yeah, is I think the <laughs> act, the actors that play the moderators do it amazingly better. Yeah, just because they're like saying their inner thoughts about it. Right. Than the real ones. Right. Right. Than the real yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it's funny. I did want to mention this. Did you watch the vice president uh, vice president debate? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, when I was watching it, I was actually watching it. I was trying not to fall asleep, and I had it in my phone. And when the fly came on Vice President Pence's head, I thought it was my phone. Oh yeah, and I did that. <laughs> I I guarantee you that happened to a lot. That oh, probably happened definitely. to millions of people. Yeah. Absolutely. That Absolutely. was the thing that I was just like, is this really happening? Like this is, couldn't be the worst <laughs> luck. Wow. Of what's going on, and that fly may lay, may have laid an egg. It's yeah, laid egg. maybe a larva. Is that, what, is that what you call it? I yeah. think. It, yeah, yes, so. yes. Yeah. Um, do you that think, was pretty fun. Do you think any of those debates actually had an impact on people on their vote, people's vote? I will say this: so the second debate, um, well, the first debate, yes, I, I don't think they usually do. I think most people have made up their minds by that point. It's really just political theater. Yeah. But the first yeah. debate, Trump probably did chase some people away. Some. However many are left, undecided voters who maybe were thinking about voting for Trump, yeah. they were probably chased away by him. The second debate, he didn't chase anybody away. I don't know that he won anybody over, right. and I don't know that he won anybody back, but he definitely didn't chase anybody away. I said um, I said this on, on my show and on Facebook. I noticed something in the second debate that I didn't hear anyone else really break this down, but I felt, you know— Political feelings and personal feelings aside, because clearly I'm not a fan of, of Trump, mm-hmm. but I felt that he won just on style that second debate. I felt that he won by a lot. Yeah, really. Not on substance, but these debates aren't about substance no. anyway. You're talking about complex issues, and you have to boil it down to two minutes and then a 30-second rebuttal. <laughs> it's all it. about style. Exactly. But in terms of style, Trump did something very specific. That I have not heard anyone else really... Like, I've heard people sort of reference it, but not really break it down. Trump, I noticed very early on, he seemed dominant. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I think I said it to Jenny because we were watching it. It feels like Trump is totally dominating this debate. Like, he's in control. Like, he's totally on offense, and Biden is totally on defense, and Trump is, is in control of the debate. And then I very quickly figured out what was going on. Trump... And I can't believe I'm using words like smart (laughs) and clever and disciplined to describe him. You're kidding. But he clearly went in there with a plan, not his own plan. Someone fed it to him. And he he executed it. He did, because what he did is he made sure that in every exchange, whether he was the one answering the question and Biden rebutting or Biden answering the question and Trump rebutting, he made sure, or if there was some crosstalk afterward, he made sure that he got the last word almost every single time yep. and he did it without interrupting toward the end he started interrupting mm. a little bit he gradually went to that toward the end but for most of the debate he was not interrupting this time he was following the rules yep. but he was making sure he got in the very last word at the end mm. and he did that over and over again and so it felt like trump's in control and biden 
He's he's there. He's Biden. But Trump is in control of this debate. Yep. And he even worked the ref. He complimented Kristen I Welker. I saw that, yeah. And wow. the thing about and the thing that was smart about you know what was smart about that? It's not that doing that is going to actually curry any favor with mm. her. She's a professional. She's not gonna start being extra right. nice to him because he did that. <laughs> but it camouflaged what he was really doing. What he was really doing by doing that is creating a distraction where people think, Oh, he's he's trying to kiss up to her when in actuality He's trying to draw attention to the fact that he's not interrupting this time mm. by drawing a distinction between how she's handling the, de- the debate and how Chris Wallace handled the debate. Exactly. Yeah. Because remember, everybody was all over Chris Wallace, Big un- unfairly in my opinion, yeah. Yeah. because what the hell was Chris Wallace supposed to do? Go up there and physically restrain Trump, right? <laughs> well, maybe. But, but by drawing attention to the fact that uh, Kristen Welker was having, a, you know, he made it look like she was in control, right? Whereas yeah, Chris Wallace, Wallace wasn't, wasn't, when in reality, don't get me wrong, she did a great job, but in reality, <laughs> he was the one in control by not interrupting yeah. and yep. by making sure that he got the last word. For a so, change, he played by the rules. Yeah, but the getting in the last word, no matter what, and mm-hmm. then and then what he did, though, toward the end, he got a little more aggressive and started interrupting a little bit. He but he worked himself. it. But he worked. No, but I think that was I think that was part of the plan. Really? He worked into that gradually. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So it made. So after that debate, I was like, he totally dominated that debate. Yeah. But so you don't think it'll have an impact, though? No. Well, I, I it'll have an impact only in the sense that he managed to successfully not chase anybody else away. Okay. On top of the people he had already chased away with the right. first debate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I get yeah. it. I did notice that. I think were you um you were I think live uh, Facebook. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think you there was something you said about that. I was like, I always wa- I always watch your your updates because I'm like he's spot on with this commentary right now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Because yeah. I was saying to myself, I was like, yeah, he, he isn't yeah. he isn't interrupting. And he's when he complimented, I actually kind of stopped. And I was like, Ooh. wait, what did he just say? <laughs> yeah. Did he is is that the same person? Like, is there someone else up there? I was very confused. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I hate – I think I hate judging debates just based on, like, like I when they had the, the bigger debates with all the candidates, they always give them ratings. I'm like, yeah, you really can't. I mean, no one wins in a debate. Right. Everyone yeah. – there's always a point in the debate where you look like an idiot because you said something yeah. wrong. Yeah. You interrupted something. You were a jerk. There's some part of it where you're not going to do the right thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was very interesting, and I think you're right. I think he really, he it was a, it was planned. It yeah. was very yeah. someone. I, want, I wonder who orchestrated that whole thing. You think it was somebody in the staff? Um, it had to be. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think he has the capacity to do it on his own. No, def- definitely not. not no, he chance. was coached. Yeah, but but because he coached very well. The rumor was that he wasn't really preparing much because yeah. that's not his thing. But he clearly right. did. Yeah. No, oh, he went. So. He went in there with a plan and a strategy, and he executed it flawlessly. Right. And nope. again, I can't believe I'm saying that about yeah. Trump. And, and not Kudos topics. Kudos to whoever did get him online. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it wasn't just yeah. topics, just his demeanor and his Overall. pace. And exactly. It wasn't. Yeah. It was all the other things that people just do naturally. Right. Exactly. The topics so. is not, he's he's not going to be coached yeah. on oh. his subject matter or in, whatever. In terms of substance, no. no he just no. stood there and lied like yeah. he always does. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But, uh, the way he brought it on, the way he delivered it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I do want to bring up some things before we uh, go to who we think are some predictions because we are we are close on the show soon. We got to skip we gotta skip every segment tonight except for this one. Wow. You know, I was kind of on co- talking about Halloween. You don't, you don't even care about Halloween. <laughs> you don't even care about Halloween. No bobbing for apples this year. No, no bobbing <laughs> for anything this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you haven't uh, voted yet in New Hampshire, you mm-hmm. can go to City Hall and vote uh, absentee. Um, if they're encouraging you that if you've gotten your absentee ballot and you haven't sent it in, don't mail it. Bring it in. Got to bring it in. You it's can too bring late it to, to mail it. You can yeah. bring it to City Hall, or you can bring it to your polling location the day of the election. Too too late to mail it. So kids. make sure you do that. Um, I'm going to go in person. I think you're you're yeah. going in person. You voted absentee already, right? I did. Yeah. 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 Um, so make sure you go vote. Um, I just want to hear quickly predictions on what we think for presidential. Matt, what do you think is going to? Oh, it's Biden. Biden by yeah. overwhelmingly. Um no, I think it's going to be closer than people expect, but okay. but he's still going to win. How many days do you think it's going to take to get that final result? That, oh, I'm that is uh, accepted. I'm going to say a week. A week? Yeah. Dad, what do you think? I'll go. I'll go with Matt. Although I I do think 
I do think it's going to be by a larger margin than I think Matt thinks. I hope so. I hope so as well. Yeah. But definitely I think it's going to be probably a week. I'm going yeah. to go bold prediction. Bold. Okay, I'm going to say we'll know the results by next Friday. It's going to be overwhelming, and I think Texas is going to flip. Oh, I would love oh, to see that. Would that I be think, awesome? I think oh, yeah. Biden wins the battleground states that he that needs to be won by one side or the other. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Arizona. I think Iowa. Arizona. I don't know about Arizona, not for presidential. Oh. Um, uh, I think Texas flips. Yeah, yeah, I think I Florida agree. goes with Trump. You think Florida goes to Trump? No, I think Florida, but by little, but I think he yeah. takes it. And I think we'll know overwhelmingly, and I think it'll be by Friday. Yeah. Um, oh, I meant the Arizona, the uh, no, no, I mean just race. I just mean we're not going to go that way because okay. that's that's too much. Too much. Um, any state uh, elections that you have any bold predictions on, or do you? I think pretty much how people think, think it's going to go. I think it's going to be a big blue wave. Except I'm confident that Chris Sununu will win. Yeah. Uh, Real you know, here think, in New Hampshire. I, I think he's going to win as well. Yeah. I, I agree. I think yeah. I think it's going to be at least ten points. Yeah. I would be surprised if it wasn't if it wasn't ten points or more. He's handled COVID properly. He has, yeah, and which is going to get him in. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. I think the fact that he vetoed everything in sight is uh, people are going to overlook that. Yeah, I, think I agree so for sure. Sadly, polling yeah, data sadly. shows Democrats are, are overwhelmingly yeah. happy with Sununu's performance on COVID. So exactly. yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah. And the last one is there any race countrywide that you think is going to be a big upset? Surprisingly, an upset. Oh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ernst. Oh. Who, who's no? Who's uh? Who's challenging? Uh, oh, Jamie something. Uh, Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Uh, Jamie Harrison. Jamie Harrison. Thank you. Yeah, That's I, think, your, I think Jamie Harrison might unseat Lindsey Graham. Yeah, I bye, agree. Bye bye, yeah. South Carolina. All right. Yeah. Do you think the same thing? Oh yeah. I think so too. I think that's a big one. I think there's going to be some seats that flip. Goose, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Calm down over there. I think there's going to be a lot of flips, but I think that's going to be the biggest surprise. I think. I think the other ones are pretty predictable just based on how the numbers have gone and yeah. the impact. I think you see Maine. Uh, I think Collins is going to flip. She's gone. I think. You think so? I yeah. think she's gone. I think Nick Sally's gone. I think oh, Joni definitely. Ernst is gone from Iowa. Bye bye. Um, and I think. What about Mitch McConnell? No. Nah, no, probably not. I think he still wins by ten. I agree, actually. Um, yeah. I think I think South Carolina is the big one. Yeah. And another one that I've I've kind of caught an eye on is Georgia, uh, with Ossoff and Purdue. Yeah. I think Purdue just kind of shot himself in the foot with the debate, and he just canceled. We just saw before him in the show. He just canceled the second debate. Oh, he did. He's going to the MAGA rally. Yeah, he's afraid. No kidding. Yeah, he canceled. He got demolished. <laughs> Ossoff went off on him. Wow. And, and, and it looked really good. Yeah. Uh, but. Interested to see that, and also interested to see how the governor's race in Utah goes. Just because I like both guys, and and that ad they did together, I got to look at that ad. Yeah, I got to see that ad. I'll send you. I'll send you the one that I that I found, and it's really good. And interested to see how that goes because that's how we should behave. Is how those guys are treating the election, and it's really cool. Most definitely to see that. And I I wish them both. Actually, one of them liked my tweet. I tweeted the video, and they liked it. (laughs) Oh no, kidding! All right, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and that is so unusual. I mean, really. Yeah. Very unusual. That doesn't happen. We got to close the show. Yes, we're skipping your section, Dad. Sorry. That's okay. Halloween is happening Saturday. There's events happening tomorrow night yep. all downtown. Uh, go check them out. I've already posted some of the events on the Weekly Down on Facebook page, so go check those out uh, when you get a chance. There's also trick or treating on um, Saturday night. I think it's from six to eight. Yes. Um, just be safe. Be careful. Um, a lot of downtown stuff going on. Yeah, well. a lot of downtown stuff. Um, tomorrow night, also, there's Retro Spectrum at 8 p.m. right Ooh. here on 95.3 FM WMNH. Yeah. yeah. Um, looking forward to that. Um, I have to give a big shout-out to my wife. It was her birthday on... on uh, what day was it? You better remember, pal. It's oh. on the 27th. I forgot what day of the week that was. Uh, Matt, happy birthday, too. Yours Thank was on Monday. You. Yes, Thank you. yes, yes. Thank you. Um, big shout-out to all listeners on 95.3 FM WMNH. We listen to the radio, whether you listen on Facebook Live. Uh, or on WMNHradio.org. Uh, Matt, thanks for coming on the show. Well, Thank this, you. This Thank was you. a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. We oh. could have three hours of this. Oh, so. easy. Easily, Easily. Yeah. 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 Thank um, you so We were just warming up. And we, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we didn't even get through some of the things I wanted to talk about, too. <laughs> uh, but make sure you listen to Matt Connaughton Unleashed every weekday from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, are you doing anything special on Election Day? Or just... Trying to get... We'll just be immersed. In immersed, yeah. Whatever immersed. results are coming in at that time. Yeah. Depending on how long some of these races drag out, you could have you have stuff for days. I mean, oh, yeah. just on all Easily. of that. Easily. Seriously. No doubt. Uh, but definitely tune in, especially um, during the election and, and after the election to get results and some great commentary from Matt Connaughton on his show. Uh, again, that's every weekday from 4 to 6 p.m. 
Uh, next week on the show, we may have a show. We might not have a show. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Some logistical things. Okay. You know, I am a parent now, so I yes, have to make sure I take care oh, of the, the little one. Absolutely. Um, but I do have something planned if we do have a show. So tune in. Make sure uh, you tune in to see if we have a show or not next week. Uh, don't forget to like us and follow us on all social media accounts. Uh, listen to us live right here on 95.3 FM WNH every Thursday night uh, at 6 p.m. with replays of the show on Saturday and Sunday morning as well as Tuesday nights. Thanks for listening. Until next time, live and be happy.